Ho way the lads, ho way the lads, everyone. Welcome, welcome to a new show. Welcome to the Fans Forum, uh, the Mac Pies Assemble Fans Forum. The link is pinned in the chat. You can come on, have your say uh, about the game. Boy, what a what a game. Um, I, I will say a few hours later, I'm a little bit calmed. I've been seeing maybe maybe I started to maybe I agree with a lot of it yesterday after the game on Twitter or Facebook or everywhere. But now I feel like things are carrying on a little bit too long but also i've been hit back by some happy clappers that uh, uh that keep reminding me of the ashley era and uh and i disagree with that so i think we need to have a balance and by the way i, I am responding to the happy clappers uh tomorrow so uh it's gonna be a video coming up because i feel like you know it's a i think that some newcastle fans we have uh Batter wife syndrome you know it's just like we, we, we used to we used to you know having an owner that just beat us down and and didn't care about the club and only about himself and that we're still thinking having that mentality that that we should just be there and and, and ride the wind you know and just yeah, kind of just like a kite and just see what happens and uh i, I for one I, I i like to say i have standards and um not that every, and people don't but i just feel like if you if you play if you have a horrible performance like we did with Chelsea last night, um, I just feel like it, it's um, it's normal for fans after the match to criticize the team. I don't think there's anything wrong with that. Uh, and so we're going to talk about it, of course, and all fans can come on and have their say. So, again, the link is in the chat. If you have an issue with the link, uh, we'll fix it. We'll send it again. The link is pinned in the chat. Uh, you don't need, really need a camera if you don't want to show your your mug. Don't You don't have to. I don't, I don't really care as long as we can hear what you have to say um and uh, by the way we're in the road we're on the road to a thousand subs so please uh if you don't mind if you haven't already subscribe to the show we are 30 subscribers away from 1000 we could be able to, to accomplish that tonight but uh yeah share it with your friends any facebook groups uh or whatsapp groups that you have by the way we just started a facebook group and uh, because I noticed that WhatsApp is, is kind of not everybody has it. Not everybody wants to download it. Not everybody wants to give out their number to strangers. And so that's fine. I totally understand. So that's why we opened up a fans forum group uh, on Facebook. The link is in the description. Uh, you'll see it right there. You can just click the link. It'll take you to the Facebook group you joined. And of course, uh, be part of the community. Interact. We're going to be we got uh, Jamie from the mag here. And he's definitely uh, I told him, you know, Go on and, and um, uh, share your articles and all that stuff. So um, no worries at all. Is there an echo on my on my end? A tiny. It's like a slight one. Yeah. There's a there's a tick somewhere. Yeah. I, I believe that might be Jamie. That might be Jamie. Uh, but cool. why is there? There's an echo castle. I, it makes no damn sense, man. What? And it always happens when I'm live too. Like what what is going on? But hopefully it does <laughs> fix itself. I'll try to work something out. But uh, uh let, me right right hear, let me let me no, I got it the right one. Let me know if you guys hear me correctly. If you say if you guys hear an echo or whatnot, let me know. Um, because it could be it could it could be Jamie actually, but let me see if I can edit his settings. Um maybe maybe so maybe, maybe that fixed it a little bit. Then I'll it, tell yeah, you I think, I think I'll put my mic off. Uh yeah, I, I believe it's, it's, it's Jamie's or Paul, but I never heard it from Paul. So, but regardless, we'll we'll sort that out. Uh, if you have headphones, Jamie, uh, you know if you that might help out. If you if you don't, it's fine. We'll we'll try to see. But again, come on the show, have your say. Uh, but for now, let's start talking about the game. Um, and let's get Jamie's perspective because Jamie, we haven't uh, seen much of you lately. So, um, what do you think about the game, man? Um. I've been trying to put that behind me a bit today. Yeah, it, it was shit, wasn't it, really? It was, uh, <laughs> you know, uh, to try and put like a little bit of a positive lilt on it, I think if if we got a half time and everything had been the same, but we hadn't let that pathetic goal in, which I don't know what Dubravka was doing, then I, I think he got through Botman too easily. Then you know it might be in a different game because Chelsea are a bit of a weak team as well, confidence-wise. But okay, we went in level at half time, and you would think in the second half somebody's got a blink, and that second goal we conceded for me was one of the worst I've seen all season. 
I mean, it goes back to me, Palmer on giving it away stupidly. The amount of times that uh, we try and play play it safe by playing it backwards and then give it away. But because we've gone backwards, we're giving it away in a threatening position. And it was just a shocker. Um, and, you know, it's one of those where you just want to put it off, but you kind of never know what's going to happen with Newcastle. So I stuck it out at the end, but it was really, really disappointing. And I think a lot of the backlash is because people were hoping that Wolverhampton was the, the start of a bit of a clean slate and that we would go through to the end of the season and things might be a little bit better. And here we are, Groundhog Day again. It's been another performance littered with errors. You know, you can see the same thing. Sean Longstaff, anonymous. Sven Botman seems a ghost of his former self. Dubravka just doesn't seem linked up with the defence and just really disappointing. Um, I don't think City will be quaking in the boots for Saturday, but let's just get to that. Let's just get that out of the way, have a two-week reboot and hopefully approach the, the last leg of the season in a slightly easier fixture list with a better mentality. And let's see where we are in the summer. Now is not the time for reactions, I don't think. Right. Uh, well, John. Fair point. Um, but to say the least, I mean, it, it's... The criticism should be welcome. I mean, the, the criticism is 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 right in this moment. Um, yeah. Now, when people get too far, I understand. You know, obviously, um, yeah, people need. But at the end of the day, also, there's only there's not too much you can do to control that. Um, I, I, I don't I don't know. I mean, it, it's one can say just stay off uh, X, stay off Twitter, stay off Facebook, and that's for, that goes for me too, to be honest. But uh, but I mean, surely last night's performance was a very, very tough performance that needed. There was, I mean, we needed to criticize that, Jamie, right? Yeah, hundred percent. I think you can say something constructively that it isn't going well, and and if it happens as a one-off, you can say it's a one-off. <clears throat> How many times has it happened this season where games left you feeling really deflated in terms of the performance? And, well, and and we're past the point, I think, where we can blame an injury crisis, you know. Right. There's still a factor there. It looks like we might be starting a new one, eh? Gordon and Byrne both went off last night. But, um, yeah, I think the criticism's absolutely justified. It's just, you know, sometimes it goes a little bit far, get Eddie Howe out and start yeah. all over again, tell a lot of them. Now, don't, but don't you think that uh, if... Eddie, in in the fans' perspective, keeps making the wrong decision. That is it not fair to, to point out that the owners might be looking at this from a different light and not taking it so lightly. No pun intended. And uh, I mean, you, you're just basically saying that. I mean, I, mean, I don't think that. Uh, well, me per se, I've never said I want. Actually, I've said the the opposite. I want him to have another season, um, despite what was going on right now. But um, it, it wouldn't be unfair to say that the owners maybe don't feel that way. You know, we, we can kind of assume, and, and maybe assuming doesn't get you anywhere, but we can kind of assume that the owners might not be particularly happy with what's going on and, and, and that they could be type of people to say, listen, it not, it's not working, whack them, and the next one. And go on to the next one, you know. So what do you think about that? Yeah, they, they make the decisions, don't they? And... I think I don't think anybody would be surprised if they took a big decision like that, um, and that's why I think the last part of the season is important. I think there's a bit of a difference between whatever happens on Saturday. There's a, a difference between getting seven or eight wins out of those last few games and, and finishing sort of six or something, and continuing like this, continuing poor some results like this, and finishing up in you know, 10th or 11th, which is, it's kind of back to late Mike Ashley territory, isn't it? Um, yeah. And I and I think that it's maybe that will make a difference between saying, if you factor out the injury crisis that affected everybody mid-season, it may not have worked out like this. Let's see how next season works out. And the owners turn around and saying, well, you know, all these players came back and these performances still persisted. So come right. the summer, if they've got someone else in mind, maybe. 
Yeah. Uh, welcome, Billy, from the Tune Review. I uh, appreciate you coming on, my brother. Um, obviously, you guys had your show, your match review, and it was great. Uh, uh, but for, for this, this show's sake, uh, what do you think? I mean, you were pretty strong last night. Um, uh, you know, uh, so do you still maintain what you said after after at your show during the watch along? And of course, I'm assuming on your match re match reaction. So, uh, you know, are you still believing the same? Yeah, unfortunately, I am. Yeah, yeah it's a long cross for me. After it's not just the performance itself; it's the it's the, the manner of the performance. I mean, we all criticised us last week or the week before last at Arsenal for lack of intensity, lack of effort, lack of effort, lack of getting tackles in. We were doing the same thing last night, exactly the same thing. We've allowed Chelsea to just, to basically win the game, and when you've got players not putting a single tackle on Cole Palmer, their biggest threat for ninety minutes, you're going to get your ass kicked, and that's exactly what happened. And then to confound that, when we were two goals down with 10 minutes plus added time to go, he pulls off our most creative play and leaves Sean Longstaff on the pitch, which to me was waving the white flag, and that's unacceptable for me as a Newcastle United manager. So for me now, the, the launch cross. Right. Um, well, you know, everybody obviously is welcome uh, to, to just chip in. And uh, like I yeah, said, well, the, the, the food... There were was... two, two lots of stats from last night, Billy, that, that particularly angered me. Seven players, seven oh, different players. It's going to be a good one tonight. <laughs> lost possession more than ten times. Shocking, isn't it? Yeah. Seven yeah. different players lost possession more than ten times. Mm -hmm. yeah. In ninety minutes, we committed six fouls, and the and the only yellow card we got was dual weight when he came on. And took one for the team in the last ten minutes. Now that uh, and, and if you if you ally that with the the stats from the Arsenal game, yeah, where we only where we only committed six fouls, ninety minutes and no bookings, when we're getting twatted four one, it, it, it just yeah. shows a total lack of commitment. Well, one Could thing, one thing be, before I introduce uh, uh, Paul from the Twitter review, that uh, I mean, uh, Jamie was mentioning something about when is the last time that we had a performance like this? Well, I mean, with Arsenal, it was well, pretty poor. Yeah, recently, yeah, and that was just recently. Now, yesterday tops it over. I mean, I think that every week the goal is play the worst you can play. That way, we keep bringing records. Because uh, with Chelsea it was extremely poor. With Arsenal, it was just a little bit above that. But you know, it's, it hasn't been that uh, that 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 long that we've been we've been playing like this for a long time i mean wolves was an exception to to the rule let's be honest uh uh, uh paul i want to welcome paul from the tune review for the first time on the show appreciate you man uh of course a great show today as well uh with the, with the match review and um same 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 question goes for you that i did uh billy i mean do you still maintain your uh your convictions from uh, your match reaction and match uh review 100 percent. yep um i'm not changing it I, i'm not in the Eddie Howe out um, area yet, but uh, I'm, I'm, I'll tell you what, we did a pool tonight and I was showing it was bloody close, man. Um, there's a lot of fans going over the other side, but not yet. Um, let's see what happens in a few games time. I mean, the, the, there's some big ones coming up after the Man City game, after the international break, see where we are uh, and then go from there. But, you know, if, if he struggles in them games, then uh, I have a feeling there'll be a lot more wanting them out. But um, I'm not there yet, but I'm, I'm extremely paid off for last night's performance. The lack of commitment, the, the way, um, you know, Billy's right, they threw the bloody game. Um, and Eddie threw the game with the substitutions. I, don't, I, I just don't, the Almiron one, I don't get. The the, 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 the Sean Longstaff situation just boils my blood on a consistent basis. So I just don't get it. But So so obviously, you know, it, 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 uh, we all agree that Longstaff is... I was saying before we started the show to to the mighty, to the mighty win, if if he would have taken long stuff out to, last night, maybe the criticism wouldn't be as bad. Uh, you know, taking you you take Gamer Rice, who I think was the best midfielder, wasn't the greatest performance, but I think that you know he was the best playing in the, in, in in the midfield at the moment. You take him out, take Willock, who wasn't playing the greatest, but certainly playing better than long stuff, and he mm. keeps it. Why he doesn't defend? He doesn't attack. I don't understand that. Anybody? Help I don't think anybody out. does, do they? Well, I've defended Sean Longstaff until the cows come out. We saw signs of how good a player he was last season. 
And while he is maybe carrying an injury, you cannot accept the 0% effort and commitment he put into that game last night. It was absolutely unacceptable. <clears throat> and, uh, you know, you just can't accept it. He's a Geordie lad. You'd think he'd want to perform more than anyone else. Mm, right. Last night's performance was absolutely shambolically poor from an attitude point of view, from an effort point of view. And let's not get the technical stuff into it because passing the ball three yards backwards every time you get the ball, not acceptable for me. Absolutely unacceptable. Yeah. Um, After Bruce Ball. Mm. Well, that's what I said yesterday. Yeah. With all due respect, and I, I got killed on Twitter today, by the way, uh, because <laughs> I'm, I'm, a, I'm a bang, I'm a bandwagon fan. You, he, somebody told me you stink like a bandwagon fan that just became a oh, fan yesterday. And that, I, that, that, that uh, have a, what did they say? Uh, I can't remember what they, what what else they said. Uh, but uh, you, that, that I'm, I'm entitled. I'm entitled to win. Chip. Man, I'm yeah, entitled. I, I mean, I, I I paid this shirt just came in today. By the way, I'm proudly wearing it. And it cost me a, a, a ton of a ton of money, man. And so I am entitled to criticize the damn team if I feel like it, like That's any other fan. So well, we're if, entitled next, aren't we? Because if we, we're if we're bandwagon them. fans, we're the worst ones in the world. Cause we ain't won the trophy fifty four fucking years. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. What, what a great I team. I, I don't get all this entitled garbage, by the way. I mean, you know, fans we pay with money. We're 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 obliged to have an opinion, and when we don't play well, what are we supposed to do? You know, I mean, there was a couple of people came on our show tonight and said that we were. What was it, Billy? We were we were dis we were disgusting <laughs> channel for the way we spoke about the game. I mean, I can't see any. How are we supposed to speak positively about that? You know, if we win, fair enough, and we play well, fair enough. But when you you see players not putting it in, you see a manager making basic mistakes week after week. You've got to question them as fans. We're entitled to do that, surely. It's as if that these people though are actually thinking we're enjoying doing it. We don't want to do it. We want to be praiseworthy. We want to be he happy. Wants we want to be be... He wants to be saying we're you know what I mean? we want to, we want to be yeah. really pleased like we were last season. Who doesn't yeah. want to be back when we when we did the four one over PSG and we were like, what the hell are we doing? Who doesn't yeah. want to be back then when we were going, we are unbelievable? No yeah. one no one wants this. No one wants this. Well, I did a watch long for that really? game and nearly had a heart attack when Fabian Cher scored. It was that intense. <laughs> But just the but I, I, and listen, I know that Eddie Howe made his mistake, his mistakes, and obviously uh, we're here to criticize that. But man, some of these players, man, I, I, what the hell is going on with Botman and Shar? I mean, they're competing. They were just they, they were forwards for Chelsea last night, and the same thing does, with Arsenal. Does any does any of you guys think Botman is actually fully fit? No, no way. Something no wrong. Way. But that but that's the problem. Then why is Lascelles not playing? Them. What's wrong well, with Lascelles? But then you have the incident with Gordon last night, didn't it? When Eddie yeah. says it, it gradually got worse. Why? Why thing, as soon as know, it was realised, did they not take him off? But you yeah. notice that you notice that we, if we don't, <laughs> if our players don't gradually get hurt, got worse from six minutes. Have, yeah, you noticed, exactly. have you noticed this? Have you noticed this? If our players don't get hurt, our medical team makes sure they get hurt. But did you see whatever <laughs> he this, dislocated his damn yeah, knee? Yeah. Like you know, you're yeah, are you hurt? No, back. no, no. I'm, I'm not hurt. I think I I can still play. No, hold on. Give me bam. Let me, let me his damn leg. <laughs> what the hell is going on, man? I think right it just, right now everything is going backwards, and uh, you know, and and I will say what I said yesterday on the show as well, and I stand by it. If Steve Bruce did the same thing, it would have been chaos all over. The tune will be falling down right now with fans all over the place trying to sack him, and and I agree. I, I agree with with managers maybe uh, parking the bus and, and 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 being tactical in a game, but giving up on the game is another thing, and that well, I don't I don't agree with that. Well, the levels Chris of delusion in the in the press conference yeah. was Steve Bruce esque. Yeah, That's it was. absolutely. Yeah. But Chris, you're talking about you know we're going to look at Gordon's injury. The club the club came out and admitted the Botman played two games with an ACL injury, right? Yet. When Anthony Gordon, as Derek says, from the sixth minute we knew he was hurt, yeah, and they learned nothing from it. They, they, they let him play on for the rest of the half. Then he goes down. Then they try and snap his leg in half. <laughs> what, what, how can you excuse that? that? That it's just wrong. They've learned nothing. Yeah, no, it's uh, it, it, it's, it's incredible. Mighty Wayne, you've been awful quiet. Uh, hopefully, your your Reapers are not on the show, and you're you're staying quiet, mate. No, no, I, I, I was trying to give. I was trying to give Jamie a chance to get someone in. Oh, Jamie, Jamie, get in, oh. man. No, don't worry, don't worry about him, Mighty Wayne. You you acting a little bit scared. 
since certain people joined the show, man. You know, not I. That would be the deal. But I mean, happy for yeah, go on. on the Botman thing, my fear is that he needs this operation that they toyed with him having, and that this isn't going to be right until he has this surgery. Do mm. we think that's the case? Or do we think if he gets yep. through the summer, this can resolve itself? Because if he needs that surgery, I think, you know, you do it now. The, the rest of this season's a write-off. Maybe maybe you leave him in on Saturday and see if something ridiculous happens. But when it doesn't, you've got, like, what? You've got six months, five months till the start of the new season. Get him under the knife. Because ACL stuff, that's like, is that a year? Well, I agree. Six months. Get them sorted. Yeah. Bob, Bob had to get a minor up to nil and have to do a major up. Well, you should have had it done there and then. I mean, we shouldn't have yeah, gone yeah. after the horse's bolt, to be honest. Uh, no, I think the, med the medical team's got a lot to answer for. 100%. Yeah. Uh, yeah. They, but 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 mighty win. They're going to get sacked. That that's what they that's what they, that's what's going to happen. On a good on a good club they would get sacked. But well, I mean, if you do investigation or, or or some kind of they'll have to look into this in the summer. They've got to because they can't they, they can't go on not with this complete farce of a medical staff. Who who is advising Eddie or his coaches that players are fit when so many times this season we've seen players come back from injury and break down within, what, 10 minutes? We've seen it with Murphy, we saw it with Joel Linton. Yeah, yeah. And, and playing players who were injured on a consistent basis. With Joel Linton at Sunderland. We've done it with Anthony Gordon. We don't learn any lessons, and somebody's got to be responsible for that. But the fact of the matter is, say they're the worst medical team in the history of, of, of medicine. If Eddie knows that his style of play hurts players, that's just the way it is, man. If you are knackered, if you if you if you are exhausted, if you are de maybe dealing with with uh, uh, maybe feeling you know that you're about to get hurt, and then you got you ask your players, you gotta you gotta pressure, you gotta be intense, you gotta you got. It's, don't you think that at some point you would say, you know what, injuries you want, I'll change my style of play a little bit, whatever. It's the same style. It's my way or the highway. It's a cheap imitation sometimes of the entertainers. And it, it, we, there was a great team, we almost won it, but almost don't count. And you know, you got to be able. If you're a great manager, you got to be able to adjust. All managers do that. So why this whole season? You every week somebody gets hurt. Well, it, it's, had, it's mind boggling. He has temp tempered the press virtually conclusively. Yeah, you know, we did it for five minutes last night, then stopped. Mm -hmm. um, but unfortunately, the plan B is to sit back and absolutely do piss all and watch them play. Mm -hmm. And I keep going back to that point. Cole Palmer did not have a tackle put on him in 90 minutes of football last night. Mm -hmm. yep. Scandalous. He had, freedom, he had the freedom of Stanford Bridge. They the red carpet south in Paul, didn't they? Yeah, yeah. Just, no, yeah. just let him play. You know, do you want to score, mate? Yeah, go for it. Why not? Yeah. Do you want to do a stupid celebration? Go for it. Go for it. Fine. That, he was that like, he scored. He was just, he was all in and shit all there, I think. You know, I was just thinking. Well, that, that, that just shows how much we'll miss year seven, doesn't it? 100%. Yeah. Oh, God, yeah. Yeah, mm. absolutely. But, but the thing is, I mean, you've got to change your style to accumulate that, surely. Yeah, yeah that's what I was going to say. Yeah. yeah as a, you know, a top class, if, you're, if you look at the top class managers, look what Cops done during his injuries. He hasn't been frightened to put kids in. Yeah, the kids might be better than what we've got, but he's not frightened to take a risk. You know, it, it's the fact that Eddie is very stubborn when it comes to taking risks. We saw it with Klopp up, up here. When they went to 10 men, he threw everything at it by putting all his forwards on, even though they only had 10 men. They ended up winning the game. Mm -hmm. But we, we've never seen Eddie take a big risk like that. And, and yeah. during the injury crisis, where's the kids? You know, give them opportunity. They might not be good enough, and if they're not good enough, then we'll see that they're not good enough. But... Going with the same old, same old, and he's, he doesn't seem to be able to manage not having Joe Linton. I know there's not many players the same kind of players as him, but they can't manage. You know, it's, it's bizarre. Roy made an excellent point last night when he spoke about the Everton, Spurs and Milan games in five days of each other yeah. and playing the exact same 11 4 three games. Yeah. Never going to be oh. sustainable. The, the, worrying, the worrying thing for me is that he doesn't appear to be learning at all. And that's... 
That's the worry. Yeah. But Derek, somebody made a comment. Um, I'm, I'm not sure whether it was on your show last night. I can't remember where I heard it. But somebody said that Eddie Howe is a brilliant coach. I think it was you, Derek, actually. He's a yeah. brilliant coach, but he's not necessarily yeah. a good manager. And that's where yeah. the difference is. You know, you look at Pep, he's a brilliant coach and he's a brilliant manager. He knows exactly yeah. what he's doing. Klopp's the same. But is Eddie that? And we keep going on about Eddie learning. If you look at the amount of games he's been a manager now, and we still say he needs to learn, it's a bit worrying. And is, is that what Newcastle United is? Are we going to be a stepping stone club where managers come and learn, where players come and get sold? Uh, you know, are we, is that what we're going to be? Again, we can't again. do that again, Chris. We've been that for 15 years under Ashley. We can't do that again. That would be ludicrous going back to them days. Exactly. And and, and to, to to the playing young players point, <laughs> Lewis Miley comes on at the 80th minute, and he seems the, like the best player at times uh, for Newcastle United. Make, make him nice passes obviously he had he was energized of course 80th minute but like come on man I, you know it, it, it he put miley on the pitch i mean he started my playing miley this season only because of the injuries and that's just well, one yeah, youngster he's, that he's yeah, played being forced to you know exactly we would never know how good he was if he hadn't done that but yeah. then if, but you now you know but now you know he's good so play him play him man and this is exactly, but this is that we're 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 not we're not inventing Coca Cola right now. Everybody knew, everybody knew here that when they said Joe Willick is coming back on the on, on the pitch, he's healthy now. He's going to take Miley out instead of Longstaff. Yeah. And sure enough, that's what's happening. Can I ask a question to you guys? Right, what what do you guys think when Trippy is fit again in a couple of weeks' time after the international break? Do you expect him to come straight back in for Livermento, despite Livermento yeah. being one of our best players yet again last night? Yeah. Does he sit his ass back on the bench as soon as Trippy is fit? Because that's yeah. a, that is that'll say it all to me. Not, not for me. Tino, Tino will be on the bench and uh, Burn will start on the left. Yeah, I'll guarantee you that's what's yeah. going to happen. Well, Burns injured, isn't he? So he might not be out. He might kind of have the decision well, taken out of his hands. Is, is he actually hurt, or is he? Was there a precaution? Do you guys know anything? He didn't look he definitely, yeah, he was. I don't know what it was, but it was it could be his back, his shoulder. He could yeah. have been be winded. I don't know. Yeah, he fell fell a massive fight, didn't he? Off he, off he, off he, head, he? It was a massive well, Roy, leap, wasn't it? Well, Roy, Roy shut me down pretty quick when I said last night. Well, Burn is hurt. He said, "Well, I, I don't give a damn about Burn because that's a good thing." <laughs> he cut me off I'm, quickly. I'm, I'm not fucking bothered, mate. <laughs> well, he wasn't the worst defender last night. He wasn't. Well, well, let's say Longstaff. He 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 put the bar really low last night, so anybody could have been. I've, I've dropped my well, faith in the Bob, toilet. Bob, yes, Bob, 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 Bob and Cher were worse than Burn last night. No yeah, doubt about oh, it. Yeah, they were allowing the place. Yeah. Go on, Roy. Well, I, I think that, I think one of the reasons. The, the back four looked really good last season is the protection from the three midfielders, which is gone now with uh, Joe Linton not there. Bruno's got that yellow card that he didn't <laughs> want to get. And Longstaff just fucking cowards, man. <laughs> um, I, I've had enough of him. Um, I don't care. And, and I'm not blaming him. We know he's shit. Eddie should not pick him. You pick Miley. Miley's a better player now. 17-year-old is better than him. He should be picked. He's not getting picked. So that's Eddie's fault. The thing is, lads, let's you still got a manager's team. Yeah, let's put to a vote here. Saturday comes when the Sutton 11 comes out. Is Longstaff starting? I hope he does. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm not bothered. <laughs> I'm not well, bothered. I mean, look, look Saturday's a, Saturday's just a we, we're not gonna get just, no. a, I mean, look, it'll be an absolute moment. Yeah, well, I'm no defeatist attitudes on this channel. <laughs> Mate, defeat, no, that's the way, no, that's Derek. the way to be. Do you no, think we're going to see better result, man? <laughs> yes, Derek. We're going. Oh, to oh, 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 well, I don't care. I, would, I just want us to go out there and put performance on with attitude and effort. Yeah, that's all I want. We might get beat ten nil, but I'll be, I'll be happy about a, a bit of effort and attitude. We haven't had that. It's, how, it, it, it's not losing the game, is it? It's it's how we lose. And if we go out to spend over to them on Saturday, but if we put a bit of fight in, then yes, you can say that. But I mean, I think a good result for us will be keeping it down under five. <laughs> I mean, yeah. The way we're looking at the game now, and the way we're playing. Surely that's the goal, is to keep it under five and keep it respectable. Mm. Derek, uh, we're, we're not, this is not the losing mentality. Losing mentality is taking off your best creative player in the team 
taken off Almiron, who looked really good on the left for a change. And well, right, 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 really good. Uh, he was good, no. but let's not, let's not like you know. No, no, better than better than what he does on the right. So he's much better. Yeah, on the yeah left. absolutely, yeah. And but then he also threw off. Anderson on the on the, under the burst by putting him out of the left wing, which he hadn't yeah, done on the for left a long wing. time. So while he's this ladder, three minutes yeah. of football, nah, not for me. And Longstaff stays on, and then suddenly it was Jesus. two, one, uh, three, two. Yeah. Oh, and then he's he's probably thinking, "Fuck me, why did I do that?" No, there was no point taking Bruno off at the time he did. I can understand that people are saying, "Oh, we're saving him for Man City." Take him off after 55, hey, 60 hey, minutes. But 10 minutes to go, what's the point? The, what's you're the not point? saving him for anything. He's now he played the full game. And so. then people are saying, oh, it's to save him from getting a yellow card. It's 10 minutes, minutes in the game as well. It's, it, those reasons are ridiculous. Exactly. He had no right to bring Bruno off last night. It was uh, a uh, call. Especially as we're chasing the game with two goals blown with 15 minutes to go. Yeah. Yep. I, I agree. You with know that. what it is? No, no. I think I think Eddie does. Eddie didn't have faith in that team coming back, so he thought, "Ah, oh, just fucking limit, limit, da limited damages. Take them off, protect them, whatever he's got." Yeah, in his well, mind. as we said, he, he and then the suddenly one. Murphy scores, and he thought, "Oh shit, I've got these yeah. idiots on now," and I took yeah. Bruno off and Miggy, and I'm gonna, I'm not gonna come back now, which is exactly what happened. I mean, yeah. Bruno didn't have a great game last night, but look what he can do. That little flick for Isak's goal, he can yeah. pick yeah. a pass out. And it, out of nothing, and he didn't get you know when we pulled it back to three two. I think it was what six minutes still to go in injury time. Yeah, yeah. you know there was still an opportunity to create a, a chance, and Bruno is one of the players that can do it. But yeah. you look at the players we had left on the pitch, and you think we're going to have to rely on a lucky ricochet or something like that. We we'll never get one of those, so you know it, it was never going to happen. Well, he, 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 he fucked up yesterday. How much difference do you think Nick Pope would make to this? I think if Nick Pope's in goal last night, I think he saves at least two of those Chelsea goals. No, I mean, no, no, no. I think the second, the second uh, one, I was disappointed with the second one, but he, he was just late seeing it. Yeah, but Derek, that oh, was not. The comments left were more, they were, they were so, they were more open than a Dutch hooker. You know what I mean? The, 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 I mean, it was dreadful. And Cole Palmer just thought, hey, I'm having a shot here, right in the bottom corner. Yeah. Mm -hmm. but, uh, you know, it, it, but yeah, maybe uh, maybe Nick Pope gets down to it. I mean, his, it, I think Nick Pope is a bit Pope may have been in a better position to see yeah. it. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah. I don't think the first goal scored with Nick Pope in either. I think, I, think, I think Nick Pope comes and claims that ball, that near post cross. Yeah. Uh, I, I think Gibraltar has as good a shot stopper as Pope is. But I think Pope's positioning is better, Derek. I think yeah, yeah. Pope's positioning well, is better. But... Let, 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 let's keep it. Let's be fair. Before Pope went out, there was a there was a match against Wolves away that people wanted him to get out of this earth, not get out, of, not, let alone the club, because he came out and he always punches the ball unnecessary. He doesn't grab it and whatnot. So it, it, I don't I don't think there's much of a difference between the Bravka and Pope. And at, I mean, people. I don't either. Roy I'm here not, wants to no, 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 no. Results would results would say otherwise. I'm not well, the results do say the results do say otherwise. Yesterday. We've conceded second uh, least in the league under Nick Pope in 14 yeah. games and 19th with the above cup. So the results do say otherwise. Yeah. 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 But Pope was behind Pope was behind a good midfield. Yeah, but the, the, no, the no, thing no. is Pope could the Pope settles the defense more as well. The yeah. defense yeah. Yeah. comes over the top. Nick Pope is gonna be there. They don't know if the Bravik is going to be there. They're, they're looking over the shoulder and thinking, is he coming, is he not? That's one downfall about the Bravka is he's very hesitant to come off his line. Nick Pope just goes. He makes his decision, and nine out of ten times he gets the ball. Yeah, he can make the odd Rick, Rick where he doesn't get it. But 99% of the time, he gets the ball away as a sweeper keeper. And I think that's the only downfall with the Bravka. The rest, you know, he's a good shot stopper, etc. But I think... That's the worry for me is the defenders are not as confident with the Brad Green goal as they are with Nick Paul. Yeah. No. Well, you I think on the one. individual merits, you could see whatever about the two keepers, but Nick Paul plays better with that team set up. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. The, the tragedy is that they haven't worked out whether to move the defence further back for Dubravka standing on his line or for to encourage Dubravka to play further up. That gap, that chasm, has been there and has been exploited to death, especially on Dan Burns' side since December. 
The amount of goals we've conceded with a counter attack, that's just someone who's just yeah. nipped into that gap. I'm sick of seeing that team goal go in. I mean, that first goal for Chelsea was just shocking, by the way. I mean, Dubravka, I mean, we, we said this last night during the one, match day live when we were commentating on it. Dubravka actually goes down to gather the ball up. And then, for some reason, Botman then decides to, to clear it. But Botman must have been in two minds because he, he didn't put his foot through it. He just, he just sort of side-footed it into nowhere and the rest is history. It was dreadful. And we've seen that numerous times with Dubravka and his, his centre-backs where the communication is all wrong. I wish Pope had Dubravka's distribution. I've got to say, Dubravka's one yeah. thing is better than Pope has his distribution. Yeah. But do you guys? Do you guys? Hello, Mason. By the way, welcome to the show, man. Um, what would yeah. you like to say, Mason? Like, you know, explain. You know, I mean, you you were in the match reaction last night, and um, so what, what what do you think about about this? You know, after a few hours, have you calmed down a bit? I've calmed down a lot. Um. But it was, you. I have it. Was, it was piss poor. Ah, you do I. Um, it was piss poor last night. I mean, yeah. considering Ch the way Chelsea have been playing this season, I thought we would have got a result. But oh, it was the exact. Look, look, look at the, look at this guy. Ineos. Music remix. Nobody Ineos. wants. Oh, to, what a nope. prick! Nobody we love wants you, to blow my name. We love you. Hello, we love you. How are Man. you? Got on your knees for Qatar and got puss all. All you got is a shit <laughs> company. You, you guys at uh, TTR get a lot of these wankers, don't you? Uh, oh, constantly. Constantly, man. <laughs> well, oh, I, saw, I, saw the, what, I was watching today and I, I, I saw that idiot as well. So some of these yeah. dickheads, man. Oh, what about uh, saying we're... Tonight, saying yeah. we were the most... Tonight, we've... Negative and all chat and chat. Oh, oh, I lost it then, like that completely um, lost it. Uh, I'm sick of those me, happy clappers. man. Yeah. Uh, let me let me welcome uh, DXK in the background. Um, you know, fans, you want to come on and have your say? We're got, we're, we're going to have to be quick because we got a lot of people on the show, of course, and we want to make it uh, uh, the way everybody can understand each other. But DX, uh, welcome to the show. What would you like to say, mate? Hey, how's it going? Doing hey, good. hey, nice to see you all. Um, My yeah, goodness. here he is, the mighty win, the main man. I've uh, yeah. had a bit of a back and forth with him in the past, but no, it's good to see hey, you. All. Excuse me, but you do an half sound like Alex. Oh yeah, exactly. Yeah, we're related. No, we're not. We're not related. I know he's <laughs> same voice. Yeah, that was a... it is the same voice. Yeah. I'm the parallel oh, is, universe, Alex. Um, but no, I'm I'm probably one of the few people who are completely throwing Eddie off the boat. I right. think he's um, I think he's earned enough credit over the last sort of couple of years to probably at least get this season oh, now. Oh, I think that is I, Alex. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I do think that. I do genuinely think that. I think that um, his like you've got to look at it almost like we've got Champions League, which was completely unexpected. And I think our expectations have got really massive in the last few months. And yeah, I, I don't know what's happening this season. Injuries have been bizarre. Um, <clears throat> I think we had a season under um, Roder, Glenn Roder, a few years ago where we had we had a similar sort of amount of injuries. But that's the only other season I can ever remember it being like this. It's been crazy. And we're still, you know, if we... Okay, if we come seventh, let's say we come seventh, we're going to go out of the cup probably at the weekend. Don't want to be negative, but that's true, right? Oh, don't um, be negative, my God. Holy cow. Yeah, no. <laughs> you get the foul power, power coming after you. Are you, are you sure you're a Newcastle supporter? Six now, mate. Six yeah. now, mate. <laughs> no, if we, come, if we come seventh, would everyone agree that that's probably enough to keep him in the job for a bit? You know, we get I, Europe. I, 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 I personally think he's... I, I, you know, I personally think that... He he's got you know well David here's in no more credit. I feel like he still has a little bit. Now he's going he's going bankrupt, but the credit cards are being used already. But yeah, I think he's he's still got one card this, left with a little bit of credit. Think, do you think? Yeah. If he I'm, right, I'm right there. Yeah. Do you on, think I'm, I'm, I'm the so same as Derek as well. If he gets no Europe, like um, oh, it's if, if he doesn't get into Europe, we got to go. Yeah, do you know what I mean? Is that right? The thing is, it, it all depends. Europe's massive, though, isn't it? Because that'll dictate some of the players we bring in in the summer. Uh, you know, like we've said a million times, if, if you're in Europe, you get the better standard of player because it doesn't matter whether it's Conference League or what. The European competitions around Europe, they all love them, apart from us over here. We think the Champions League is the be all and end all, but the European teams. Their fans think very much, very highly of all the European competitions. So the players think the same over there. 
So it dictates a better player coming in if we're in a European competition. So I think it's massive. True, yeah. and, and also where, yeah. where where do we where do we all stand on the that there's a, a sort of sub debate going on all over the place? Would we be better off not qualifying for Europe this season? Oh, so we don't so play that enough next, games. So that next season we don't play. We haven't games. got the three that's, games a week. We can no, build the squad that, accordingly, etc. Et Where does everybody stand on that? No, that we is must qualify eighteen. That is eighteen fifties when you were about twenty five. 1850s mentality, man. Well, that there was is a season in 1996. No, no, I, 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 I'm in, I'm in the get Europe. I'm not going to get, 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 get a mansion because I'm going to have to, uh, you know, clean a big house. What the hell is that mentality, man? It just makes no sense. Listen, hey. I'm going to say something here which I thought I'd never say, but I kind of, I, I do agree with Derek on this one. I think there is a lot of fans. No, no, listen, I think there is a lot of fans out there who do come. Whether it's right or wrong, they do all say, "Oh, you know, if we're not in Europe, we don't have the three games." But we want that. We want the three well, games. We want the European yeah. competition. You know, what's the point of what's the point of having any ambition at the club at all if they don't want to be involved in Europe? It doesn't matter what yeah. competition it is, and that's up to the the hierarchy at Newcastle United to get us a squad that is capable of playing three games a week. Yeah. Whether it's loan deals or we we just bring in. Decent players to to cover the squad, and we've got a let's just say we've got a good 15 16 players, top quality. The rest are decent, so we've got that kind of squad that can cover the three games. And because that's where we all want to be as fans, it doesn't matter what competition, it doesn't matter the Newcastle fans, they'll fill out St. James's whether it's it doesn't matter what European competition it is. Right. Tell, tell West Ham the competition doesn't matter, Man. absolutely. Man. Mighty yeah. win. We just had eight days of rest and we played shite. I mean, exactly. yeah. I'm tired yeah, of the yeah. damn rest it's conversation, man. It's, it's not get... just that. And all these fantastic players that the owners have brought in for us, and they are fantastic players. Bruno, I've never seen a better one. Uh, Isaac, even Botman, I know he's injured, but when he's on fully fit form, he's fantastic. See you later if we don't make European football. Mm. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'll tell you what, um, Bruno will be gone in the summer if we're not. That's yeah, I, think, I think that's a good point, and people don't really bring that up. I mean, they bring the three game, three games a week up, but what they don't think of is what those guys have just said there is the players who are currently at the uh, Newcastle want to be in Europe, and if we're not in Europe, they will want to go somewhere where they are. So you know, there's a, there's a, there's a terrible flip side to that. If we don't get Europe, we will lose our best players, and you can't blame them. Breaking news, breaking news. Arsenal just went 2-1 up on penalties after two each. 3-2 now. Now, now, let me... Let go, I don't give a shit about, about, about the goons, man. Uh, listen. It does. It oh, does. We need, we, we need Arsenal well, yeah, to... Yeah, yeah, breath. I get that, but I'll find out tomorrow. Yeah. Sofa we score need, is going to tell me. I don't, no, but we need, we need, the, we need the points for the English teams. Just think. We need the goals. No, I, I get that. Now, let me ask you guys this. Let me ask you guys this. Qualifying 13th. Where we were we prepared for European football this season? No, no. this season, of course not. No, no. and you guys say that because, no. the, because we didn't have the. Do you say that because do you say that because we didn't have the squad or because the manager wasn't up there yet? We didn't have a know? squad. We didn't have yeah. a squad. We we had a very very good start in eleven, yeah. but not necessarily the rest of the squad, and I think that's why we. Well, think that's why. Paul had good backup in just about every position, but they just yeah. all got injured and left row with eleven. Yeah, but the yeah, but the quality as well, Derek. You, you know, to to compete in the Champions League, you have to have elite players on the bench as well as in the start eleven, and we didn't really have that. Um, but yeah, injuries crippled us as well. We've got to take that into Of course, they did. Um, but Eddie's refusal to sort of it, Eddie's stubbornness to really play the same eleven, like right. Billy said earlier, time after time, crippled us. Yeah. And we're never, we're never going to be competitive Chris, in the Champions League because FFP doesn't allow us to be. Simple as that. But, yeah. but it's fair to say we weren't prepared for the Champions League group of death. I mean, I know what the F in Group F stands for. It stands for fuck are we getting out of this group. You know, but, 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 <laughs> but the thing, Jamie, is we could have very much advanced if it oh, wasn't well, for Roy and his buddies putting us out. Arsenal through anyway. You know, we could have advanced. We actually we we beat we were PSG. Like Twenty minutes away, yeah. 
Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, yeah, yeah. Now we did mess yeah. up on the Milan yeah. game. By the way, the, the, elephant, the elephant in the room as well is that FFP is preventing us building up the squad that's necessary to maintain a proper European yeah. challenge. What you said, no, absolutely. Yeah, mate, but that, I think the mistake was in the summer as well when we bought three players who were non-starters. Yeah. Instead of fixing your fixing your eleven, fix your eleven. So basically, you buy a right winger and you send Miggy to the bench. You're automatic. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Or, eleven or stronger. You played with Dampen, mate. The point is, we put more reserves for the good eleven that we had. Well, our our eleven were good, but not good enough for Champions League. And then the, no, no, we were lacking. We were lacking. We were playing with Dampen yeah. on the left. So no, but you know they were born to work, but then they weren't available. Yeah, but you say that, right? But had we not had the group of death, I think we might have got yeah. through. Guys. I really do. I think we, yeah. we, we could have competed with quite a few of those teams in the Champions League. I think the group that we got drawn in knackered us yeah. as well. Because I think we, we, had a good, we had a good enough start at 11 to, to really compete with some of the other teams. It's just, we, you know, we, we went with three European giants. So it was very difficult. Yeah. And let's be honest, it's only a horrific refereeing decision that cost us in the end. And that's it. Yeah. No, well, cool. yeah, yeah, that, that is very that, that, That's it right. Was me uh, sitting upstairs. Yeah, that was that was your that was your mates, man. Just just fucking saying PSG needs to go through. Let's he's a, let's get he's these magpies away. And if he's not first the main night is group, we win that group. But mm. also, yeah, guys, that's oh, right. You got but yeah, yeah, that, that we would have we advanced from that one. There was yeah. a game against Milan that we cannot forget. And I know that uh, Mighty Win, he he loves that that Almiron smiles, and that's enough for him to to <laughs> idolize him to to I the levels of Alan Shearer. Uh, <laughs> but for me, I don't give a shit if he smiles or not. Uh, I need him to tap in a damn ball with his right foot. Oh, He's that was that, that that was that was criminal. But we, we you know, we, we I mean, look, we can't really look back at that. No, yeah, the, you're the, right. reason we, the, the reason I mean, the Champions League. It was an excellent experience, certainly for the fans, uh, but for the players as well. And it'll make the players hungry for more. I mean, we haven't seen that this season, but that's because of horrendous issues, you know, whether it be the medical staff, the injuries, all sorts of stuff. But I genuinely believe if we were in another group, we probably would have gone through. And January would have probably been a very, very different transfer window. Yeah, 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 and even if yeah. we hadn't gone so gung ho at the end of the no. one game and been a bit disciplined, we'd have qualified for the Europa League at the same time as well. Yeah, now, yeah. let me let me ask you fellas this: Bruno should have gone for that tackle and yeah. on halfway line. Let, let me let me ask you fellas this: um, yeah, I'm looking at the table and I, I feel depressed. Uh, <laughs> but you know, so uh, let, let, I mean, Manchester United are six, and they have forty-seven point seven more points than us. There, people, play, teams are slipping away. Teams are slipping away from that goal that would be. They're eighth. not slipping. We're the ones who are slipping. You guys are hoping that eighth gives it uh, uh, somewhere, but uh, the bottom line is the seventh does. Correct. That's the Conference League. No. Yeah, seven. but the one you've got is the United keep results. They, they keep getting 62 results. Sixty-two points. And Tottenham, please. They, can we just say Tottenham is away? I mean, they're they're going, man. Thirteen points. You know, I mean, it's just, Spurs, and that's Spurs are well out of goal. The top look at the run-ins. Look at the run-ins. Man, we did that. We did that. That is, show. Is it a thing where it will get you it if one of the top teams wins the FA Cup? Because yeah. they're going to want it. It's going to be City. Yeah. It's going to be Man United yeah. or Liverpool. So if someone above you yeah. wins the FA Cup, eight. Okay. We need. We need both right. to be in the top four or five already. Yeah, because of the mm-hmm. of the top teams already. In the top four or top five, the second place will get a spot. So we'll I think four. Villa, I think Villa are catchable. I think they're that they're on a, a bad room now and they've got a horrendous yeah, win of games. They're about fifteen goal. points clear of us, though, aren't they? Well, I still think they're catchable, but unfortunately, we're going to get, yeah, sure get fifteen points. Are we, we going to get but, fifteen points? I don't see. My, yeah, my, 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 problem, we've got to get the points, isn't it? We've got to get the points to catch them. That's the that's that's the hard bit at the minute. Yeah. yeah. Well, uh, with the football they're playing. Oof. And we're going to scramble we're, for We're not even going to get that now. The my nine, you, you said 29 points. I said 19. And I don't think we'll even get 19. Right. Um, listen, help us help us reach 1,000 subs. We're, we're close. We're about 20-ish away. So um, please smash the like button. And uh, we got a few minutes left on the show. And I, I want to I end it with this discussion, create a discussion here. 
Um, if we finish, say, eighth, which is not that far, two points, damn it. Um, what does the PIF do? I mean, what they, they are the, the ultimate, the, the ones that take to make the ultimate decision. Um, is, is that enough? Uh, you know, what did they do if we just finish as eighth, maybe seventh, whatever it is? Um, I mean, but but you you can't erase everything that's happened, obviously, this season and the season prior. Think, uh, yeah, but I think Chris, if we get into Europe, given all the happened this season, I still think that's a damn good achievement, given everything that's happened. I get that, I get that. But now let me let me ask a question on top of that: Can PIF really sit down and trust and listen and say, okay, who do you want? I'll give you whoever you want. I, I, obviously, understanding the, the the limitations with money. Do you really think that steady we... hand with transfers? That's the one thing that worries me about how is the players that he's reportedly looking at with the likes of Billing, etc. That's the one thing that is worrying me for the summer. And that's why I think we need a sporting director in ASAP, you know, uh, uh, who can who can get a list together and work with Eddie on it and say, no, we can get better players than this. Because I don't think without a sporting director that Eddie will be advising the right, you know, nobody will be advising Eddie in the right way. And that's the big worry I've got. I don't know about you guys, but, you know, the players that we're linked with don't exactly fill me with a lot of excitement. No. Well, I think Lloyd Kelly on a freeze wouldn't be a bad signing, but some of them. Because that would free, that on a free would be obviously a good one because it would keep the money for other other positions. But it's the other positions, you know. And unfortunately, level, we need better players. Unfortunately, we're no director of football. We have Eddie Howe's nephew on in charge of transfers. We also have yeah. Jason what what do you guys think about who that? Seems, who seems to be a shadow of, of Eddie Howe? Like, what what yeah. do you guys think about uh, that? I feel like that is such a and, not, and again, you don't know these people. Isn't it really? We don't know. Uh, Eddie Howe seems like he's a, a straightforward lad and, and an honest guy. But I'll say I'll tell you this, and we don't know exactly what what he said. But if I if I say, hey, put my nephew in there because I need him to be there. It's kind of a, a, a dickhead move, to be honest with you, because it's not his damn job. And and whether he doesn't trust, he needs to have somebody in there th that he can trust. Man, it's you and the sporting director to have meetings and say, I want this player. Can you get him or not? You don't need to have your nephew in there. Or what do you guys think? Uh, is is that okay to, to bring in no. family into this situation? Not for me. No. Not in the job he's in. Not in the job he's in. Maybe what, what job know, Paul, you, Paul, you probably know this. What job had, had he done before? Had Howe's nephew done before? Like, what was his previous role? No idea. I think no it, idea. It wasn't as high up as he is now. Um, uh, but that's if he was if he was further down the pecking order, like working behind the scenes in Newcastle, I wouldn't have a problem. He's in a damn important job, and I don't think he's qualified to do it. I don't, I don't know what you guys think. I just think it's a bit of a mess behind the scenes right now, actually, and the need it to is. sort that out in the it, summer. All of it. it all is. of it. Yeah, yeah I think Medic, with, Medic with, nephew, with, the, with the nephew and Shola, I love Shola, but come oh, on. Yeah, I come agree. on, man. Sure, Shola right. is a loan manager fighting yeah. to me to death. Back, to, back yeah. to the point about Eddie and what PAF will be thinking. If they knew anything about football, they will see that the attitude on the pitch isn't good enough, isn't, where, isn't worthy of a Newcastle United side, and they'll be getting rid of him. If they knew about football, whether they've got a bit of faithfulness to him, or whether Amanda and Jamie and and and, and Mayor don't have their say because they're obviously close to him, to me, it's, it, it, it doesn't that stick right for me. Honestly, it's the it's all about attitude, yeah. attitude and lack of effort and lack of kind of intensity, and then waving the white flag and bringing your best players up when we still have a chance of winning games. Absolutely. Have you guys have you guys noticed how quiet Mayor Dad's been on social media in recent weeks? Yeah, he's been non-existent. Yeah, I don't know whether that, that I don't know whether there's anything in that or not, or just that he doesn't he doesn't want to put anything on you know X or whatever after a defeat. But he's been very very quiet over the last who, few who, weeks. Who, who did you say? I'm sorry. No, no, the word on the street is that the GS7 yeah. deal is done. Yeah, that, yeah, that's what Amanda's been working on apparently. Oh, but if it's done, Derek, announce it. Give us give us something to cheer. You know what I mean? Yeah. Do, I don't do understand it, that. Weeks well. event. I don't understand the, the point of saying them like with Joe Linton. Yeah, we're working on Joe Linton and things are looking good or you know, we're we're still in the middle. Like what the hell is wrong with it? we're grown people, man? Like like you know, it's, it ma makes no sense all these again. There are a lot of things that I believe in the background that are not looking uh the brightest. And, uh, and, I feel and like, what do, what do we scream for when Mark Astor in charge? Transparency. And, and exactly. that's what and I'm going to say I'm, I'm going to bring yeah. a, a one up one point that the the Roy said yesterday that was spot on. That with the PIF takeover, 
a lot of things that got questioned with Ashley right now. You are being, uh, you're not a Newcastle fan. You are not this. The same people that were criticizing Ashley for everything. And I'm not saying, I'm comparing the two, obviously. It's night and day. And we are, obviously, it was needed. But I'm just saying, the the, the giving up on the game, the, the stuff behind the scenes, appointing players uh, to do roles that got knows just because you were a footballer for God's sake doesn't mean that you can be any director or any 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 anybody in charge of 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 a bigger role, an executive. So great point, Roy. I'll give you a cookie after the show. <laughs> no man, I tell you what. Yeah, why. Yeah, I mean, on the flip, sorry, Roy. On the flip side of it, you know, we know the walk into a shit show, right? We know there's a hell of a lot they needed to do, True. and they've only been, you know, in business terms, have been here a very very little amount of time. To get everything changed in such a short time so we we have to have faith that they know what they're doing behind the scenes but the, to us at the minute the way things have gone this season it does seem like a bit of a shit show but i'm sure i'm sure they'll be sorting everything they'll make it a priority to sort a lot of things out in the in the summer they're not stupid um mm. but i just think you know there is that sort of element of what we as newcastle united fans we've had so much shit over the years we, we just keep thinking we're we're sinking back to it or something like that, but we're not. You know, we, we have to put the faith in the owners that they know what they're doing to to re-establish the transparency between the, the, the club and the fans. Because that's they did make a big thing of that when they took over, and we need to see that back again. And let's not forget also that when people said about the Champions League last year, Eddie Howe had the perfect storm for him last year because he could maintain the, the pressing tactics because halfway through the season we had a, a month break. And so that season was shortened to see if you like it in the middle and then lengthened at the end. And we're now feeling the effects of that this season. Mm. Mm. Yeah. Bloody stupid Qataris again putting the World Cup on in December. It's yeah. going to be a transformative one. And there's the potential if Bruno was to go or someone goes for 100 million quid, that's potentially five, six, seven players. So it's a massive, massive decision. Do you give that money to Eddie Howe to build the team he wants or do you start exactly. all over again? But if they don't trust him, if they're, if they're not 100%, why would you spend the limited money that we can spend? Why would, you know what I'm saying? Like, come on, we, yeah. we know. Yeah, but man, could have a Disney this is why they need a director then, that, isn't it? That eats into your PSR for next year. So it's I it's a bad time for Eddie Howe too, isn't it, Jamie? I mean, there's a, there's a, a number of elite managers out there waiting for work. So Eddie yeah. Howe's got to be really yeah. careful in what he does. I'd, 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 I'd go and get one now. I would. Yeah, exactly. I'd go and get one now. <laughs> yeah. I would. I'm just saying, uh, uh, uh Rafa yeah, ben R Rafael Benitez is free. He's not oh, free. No, 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 I'm just saying, I'm just saying, <laughs> maybe, bring Rafa, maybe bring Rafa into work as a defensive coach for him. <laughs> what about, what about yeah, Rafa as director of football? Potentially. That's my you know, that's th there's a there's a fine line between wanting to. So he has to know whether you want to be a manager or not, because there's a could be a conflict of interest there if you mm. are a director yeah. and want to be a manager, and then you, you know what I mean. And he said it on the previous interview in, in uh, Sky Sports that, uh, which by the way, they stopped streaming about club. I'm, I'm happy that that they did that, and it took a month for them to stop uh, talking about club. You know that he was leaving Liverpool. Um, is that a Liverpool? Is that the Liverpool channel? I don't know. Football was all about clock. Is that? I thought that is that the Liverpool channel, uh, the fan channel. Uh, anyways, so yes. Chris, I've got to shoot, mate. Uh, yeah. I'll catch you later. All right, mate. Thank you so much for coming on the show, man. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, and uh, so listen, we, we're also going to call it off. I mean, we, we we're going on an hour anyway, but uh, uh, is, is it going to be interesting to see how things develop? Surely, listen, we we're we're passionate fans and, and, and hang on a minute chris can, yeah. can, can we can we reach tonight before events overtook everything tonight was going to be a, a head to head between it jamie was. and dxb oh, oh yeah that is right is that right was that right so, uh well i mean let me let me, no, I'm gonna have to have a rematch. let me put let me let me let me put them together and have their piece oh on God. uh a lot of pressure, in, jamie. if everybody has time you know we just could spend <laughs> yeah, a five more minutes or so uh, yeah, yeah. Actually, oh, we're, 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 we're five about, minutes. We were, well, come on, two and a half hours. Come on, damn it. I mean, uh, <laughs> I, I got stuff to do, man. I got little kids. No, on, nobody did that. Uh, oh, but uh, uh, listen, uh, and we got Ryan Rowan as well on the show. You join, join late, man. Paul was on the show, and and uh, but anyways, Canadian, uh, oh, Canadian what timing. Hell? What's happening with Ryan? Whoa, what's going Ryan's on? Ryan's got a glitch, and no signal in the basement. 
He's in the dungeon. Yeah, man. In the Matrix, man. Yeah, that. By the way, that looks like you know Americans. We're known for serial killers. <laughs> Canadians. <laughs> you've, not like sent, that. You, you've not sent one <laughs> to our medical stuff, have you? <laughs> anybody, anybody, anybody that doesn't have a drywall uh, in their in their in their <laughs> very Dexter, very Dexter, isn't it? Yeah, uh, but I mean, you guys were. Uh, oh, let me put you guys here, uh, Mason, on here, so you guys can discuss. The, I mean, Rafa Benitez. Obviously, some people say he was a good manager. Some people say he wasn't a good manager for Newcastle United. Um, but you guys had a, a little. You know, you guys were chatting it up in the in, in the WhatsApp group. So. Say your piece. Who's in favor of Rafa? Who's not? Well, I was kind of. I, I like Rafa as a manager. Do you want to go? For, I'll, I'll go first. You like? Um, yeah. So I, I was kind of like coming down on the side of not being a massive fan of Rafa. I, I kind of. I think he was a little bit overrated what he did, and there's a few reasons. I, I think he did a decent job. He got us promoted. He kept us in the league for a couple of years, so he did all right. But um, his points tally for his two seasons in the Premier League, full seasons, was exactly identical to Steve Bruce's, and we despise Bruce, right? The football was equally as awful to watch as when Steve Bruce was a manager. In fact, it was possibly a bit worse. It was some games were hard to watch, you know. Um, and I think his transfer record was really mixed. So there were great signings like Fabian Shah, one or two other people, yeah. but he got rid of Ivan Tony on the cheap. Um, he, didn't see, he did, really didn't rate Mitrovic, and he was like dumping Mitrovic to the side. Uh, couldn't couldn't get in the team ahead of Daryl Murphy, and um, yeah, there was a lot of stuff he did that I just think it might have set the club back a little bit. And then he left to go to China to take a big paycheck when there was a pretty good contract apparently on the table. It was I think one year. He could have taken a one year contract, waited for the takeover. Um, Amanda and Co were quite keen to get him in, and I just think they kind of. He sort of just followed the Yankee dollar, went and got the money, and then and then went to Everton. So like he's beloved in live at, at Liverpool, he went to the rival club, and I just think that kind of like that says something about his character a little bit. So I'm not sure. I'm kind of, I, I think well, retrospectively he's gone down. Do, do you want to do you want to take that, Jerry? Yeah. Well, I think there's a point when things could have really gone down the hole after that 2016 relegation. And obviously everyone's a little bit miserable tonight, but overall, I think we'll all agree the next five, 10 years look, look very good. And I think there's not the universe out there where we never recover from that relegation. If we didn't bounce back with the wage bill we had, Ashley could have cut his losses, assets stripped even further. You know, you never know where we'd have ended up. And Rafa Steen, got us out of that because the way we got out of that was he bought a team for the championship with the seal of the the assets that moved on you know the likes of Dwight Gale, Kieran Clark, Matt Ritchie Matt Ritchie's still here but he did a great <coughs> job that time to get us back up and then he revamped that team with signings like Fabian Chair and you know the guys brought in like Rondon on, on loan to stay in the Premier League and the brother Dubravka, yeah. Uh, um, Matt Sells. In the Sorry. time that he did in the Premier League compared to Steve Bruce, there's two key differences. First of all, it's the money. 100 million quid, Steve Bruce, he was given Alan St. Maximin, he was given Callum Wilson, he was given Joe Linton and didn't realise what he had. Um, and Rafa had to turn a profit. He, had to bring, he brought in something like, I think, a net £30 million pounds over the, the years he was here in, in the Premier League and still in the same position. So he's got, he spent that next to nothing, kept the club ticking over to a position where it was able to be sold at the piff. And Steve Bruce, as I say, got all that money. The other main difference is when Rafa Benitez left, he left a solid team, solid back four, one of the best defences in the league. Since being allowed to buy Almiron at the back end of that season, they had the fifth best record in the country. When Steve Bruce left, that team was heading out. That There's no way that team was surviving unless it had the, the makeover that it did in the middle of the 21-22 season. It, it was November, we hadn't won a game. And the, the position that Bruce took us to over those two years, in spite of 100 million spent, it's kind of like you could take isolated facts and say Kevin Phillips was a better striker than Alan Shearer because that one season he spent more money than him. By the same, he scored more goals than him. 
by the same token, Steve Bruce and Rafa Benitez got the same points, but let's look at what went before, what went on after, and all the context. And if you talk about Rafa managing Liverpool and Everton, Steve Bruce managed Sunderland and Newcastle. He managed Birmingham and Aston Villa. He managed Sheffield United and Sheffield Wednesday. The only rivalries he didn't manage both sides of were the clubs that were too bloody good to employ him. Yeah. I don't. Th I don't think there's a debate because I mean, to be honest, I can say this: if I, if it was, uh, if it was, I, I say this: if if Steve can Bruce I come back to that in a minute? If, yeah, yeah. If, yeah, yeah. If, Steve, yeah. if Steve Bruce was in charge of our, if we were in the championship trying to come up, I highly doubt that we would have done done it in we, the first we, year. We would have sunk. <laughs> we would have been to the fifth division right now. now. But yeah, yeah, but the DX go oh. on, mate. No, I, I just think it, that the important distinction here is. I'm not saying that Steve Bruce was a better manager than Rafa Benitez for us. That that no. wasn't the, the debate. Like I think Steve Bruce was very lucky. We had a lot of lucky results. I don't know how we won those games. It was incredible. Like I remember watching matches where we just got smashed for 88 minutes, and then we got a, a goal off someone's shoulder in the 89th minute and won one nil. Two two against but, Everton. That's a classic. So yeah, and, <laughs> yeah. Been, matches like been that. Five and, now should have been five now that game. So so yeah, Bruce. For me like way below but i just think some people put rafa on that kind of pedestal of being uh, a better manager than chris hewton or alan pardew was for us or um oh he was he, he was definitely yeah. a better well, than alan pardew. Alan pardew got us fifth place i think you could like at the yeah, time i think it was maybe them, but... a bit more about Demba bar pepper c say <laughs> well no but you know, he, he got them functioning <laughs> he, got, in he, got, he got he like, got lucky he put you know, three together, you know, didn't he it, with ben yeah, Arthur. right yeah. but you know rafa came from real madrid Real Madrid, and he he was sacked. sacked. He was sacked, but let's let's just say he was third. He was third, a few points in away a, from the leaders of Atletico Madrid. So Florentino Perez is not known for page. If Florentino Perez was managing uh, Newcastle United, Eddie would have been going the second week. Uh, so yeah. I, I'm just saying, uh, you know. But I mean, to me, let's to be fair, Rafa was a was was all right. I mean, it wasn't. Now he did, uh, you know, promote us. So did a decent job. I'm not. Yeah, that's a, that's that's a big thing. And Steve Bruce, we can all agree that he's just man. Come, he was just an opportunist. Yeah, was, makes money off of of getting fired and getting sacked and and. Uh, no, I mean, in, fair, in fairness to DXP, he, 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 he's never said that uh, Bruce was a better manager no, I, than yeah, Benitez. Yeah, he just said Benitez wasn't all that. Well, I, yeah, exactly. I, I didn't say you don't put words in my mouth, old man. And and with the profit thing, I think it's important to say like we we'd been relegated and. Um, and then, a, you know, you have a fire sale, like look at Leicester this summer, look at us yeah. when we went down with, um, well, when Shearer was the manager, you do, it's inevitable you're going to sell five or six big players because you have to, to balance the books. So I think that we, that summer we sold, like maybe we made about 40 or 50 million pound profit that summer alone. So it was like, I think that kind of skews it a little bit. But I think well, yeah, since we, we sold us to Zoko and Wijnaldum for 25 each. Yeah. Well, since we left, since Ruff has left Newcastle, 30-35 He's done piss all since he's left Newcastle. He's a busted fish as far yeah. as I'm concerned. But, yeah. but yeah. we ain't how we are now without Rafa Benitez taking over the club. Yeah, in, in, in yeah he, he was a brave really? in a dark time, for sure. <clears throat> yeah. Um, now, on that played, note... That squad, yeah. he, played, he, played the, he played the fans and uh, Ashley Cards really well. That's he did, yeah. Right. He's a good politician. Um, yeah. Yeah, uh, we have to we have to go, fellas. I mean, it's been a great show. Uh, we've had a great guest. Appreciate everybody joining. Of course, uh, the usual folks, uh, part of the channel, Jamie from the Mag, uh, uh, Mason. Uh, you know, you, were, were you did you play today, Mason? No, I was a no, I was you never played, really. man. You never get in the team, bro. Chris, it's a professional football game, man. Holy. Uh, whatever. Yeah, uh, yeah. DX, I appreciate it for joining. Ryan, I don't know what happened. He just wanted to, you know, he just he just wanted to be there. He's there in spirit. Uh, yeah, uh, uh, Billy and Paul from the Tuna Review appreciate you guys coming on, of course. And uh, congrats on the 28,000. That's a big milestone. That's you know, great, great news. And of course, uh, you know, you, you, people know the Tuna Review on YouTube, of course. Uh, go subscribe, go follow if you haven't already done so. Uh, and help us out, help us reach a thousand subs. We are very much close. We're very close. We started this thing in December, and I think, I think we've done pretty good, uh, in, in such a short time. So, uh, Help us out to grow the channel. We will end the show on the yes. me, me oh, and the Mighty Wayne we're doing me and oh, the Mighty Wayne we're doing uh the once upon a time pod for, for members. And my goodness, I heard that uh it's been a while. That was a young kid when I heard that. And that thing got my, my blood pumping, man. I, I tell you what, I wanted to jump I was, I was 19 with hair. 
with hair. And you were you were a little bit you were a different man. And you know what, what? Kevin Keegan was. I wasn't, I wasn't even a man then. Yeah. People say uh, he lost the plot, but what he said was absolutely spot on. Yeah. Absolutely. Spot on. Nobody, nobody, so. nobody nobody says that, that Alex Ferguson started this crap. Of course he did. He started but, it. Well, Ferguson was the master. <laughs> so the master of the game. game. Yeah, I, I, I heard. Uh, I, I read um, a newspaper at the time. I can't remember what it was from, but well, like online newspaper of the the of the, like the, the the first page, and it said, you know, uh, a shameless. Uh, uh, they were criticizing Kevin Keegan, dude. The other manager started it, and he's you know he, he was pretty shameless himself. So uh, let go on, man. Anyways, we had a great show. Please smash the like button on your way out. Subscribe. Uh, and subscribe to all our friend channels. Uh, link in the description for the tune review. Link in the description for uh, it's all black and white TV uh, as well. Jack's little Jack show. Um, yeah. So those are the best channels anyway. So everybody else, they just they're just uh, opportunists for new. <laughs> anyway. uh, thank you, fellas. We'll see you in the next one.